Uh, a lot of craziness going on in the world of professional wrestling. I want to start off by the CM Punk story this week. CM Punk sent out a cryptic Instagram story, essentially trashing everybody from Tony Khan, John Moxley, Chris Jericho, and Dave, as I said at the top of the hour. He also posted another Friday night uh, uh, story of an alleged interaction with Shawn Michaels. Now, I... I want to explain to people, a lot of people are losing their minds. I got this sent to me like a billion times when he posted this on Friday. He didn't make up that story. It was a, it's a meme from like the 2000s. I used to see this on like the early days of Reddit. Uh, I've seen this story posted numerous times. He didn't come up with this. This is like a, like a weird internet joke. Of, of like people doing like shoot interviews and then it, it kind of manifests into this. Or it was a fan. Actually, no, it was a fan story about the first time they met Shawn Michaels at dinner. So a lot of people lost their minds on it. But I think the big story here, Rich, is that original quote that he put out. Do you want to read that? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is kind of interesting because I feel like it, it in a weird way, it broke the Internet. And it, there's a lot of stuff you can pull from this, but I'm going to read the quote directly as he posted it to IG and then Instagram and then deleted it. Sigh. I wasn't clear to come back to wrestle yet. The plan was to wrestle at the pay-per-view. I sat and listened to Moxley, Moxley's Rocky Three idea. I explained how I'd never seen a Rocky movie. And I thought the idea sucked. But if the boss wanted to do it, whatever. He said he wouldn't lose to me. I never experienced someone refusing to lose to me. I just laughed. I asked Tony if this is what he wanted. He said, yes, he's the boss. So I said, okay, but I need to be cleared first. They kept saying it could just be a squash, so I didn't need to be cleared. I scoffed at that. My health is more important. Dave Meltzer's a liar. Chris Jericho's a liar and a stooge. There were plans, but plans always change. But I'll never put a company above my health ever again. Very interesting here. Yep. Very interesting. Um, he did not mention the Bucks. He did not mention Kenny. He didn't mention mm -hmm. anything of the altercation. Uh, this is interesting because I I understand, like, he's never seen Rocky Three, but the fact that Moxie would say, I'll never lose to you, or I wouldn't lose to you, uh, it's like, I don't know, you know, believe what you want to believe. I don't think yeah. Dave is making up a story here. I don't think Dave is in the business of putting up fake stories. Uh, you know, this is whatever he's been told. And I'm sure he's being told a, a side of the story that Punk is not agreeing with. But, you know, the original thing was when he came out, everybody was saying that he was listening Dave's story or, or the version that's out there was the Bucks version, which was it was never the case. Um, you know, what happened that night is very tragic, but... I mean, this is like, why are you kind of alluding at, like, it, it sounds so pro-wrestling, all of this. He wanted to do a Rocky really Three does. finish. I've never seen Rocky Three, so I said, I won't do it, but whatever, if the boss wants it. And then he said, um, you'll never beat me. I'm like, oh, a little Shawn Michaels Bret Hart here, huh? It's fascinating, and there's a lot to unpack in these three little paragraphs. And mainly, you know, like I personally, and I think you're the same way, you never take this stuff to heart. It's pro wrestling, you know, because when you take it to heart, you start getting worked, and you get worked up by all, the, all these weird things, right? My takeaway as a big old nerd is... Yeah, how could this dude have never seen a Rocky movie? You, the <laughs> ultimate, the ultimate underdog story. Like, if, honestly, if if this read a different way, and it was, I sat and listened to Moxley's Rudy idea, and I explained to him, <laughs> I never saw the movie Rudy. I would totally be like, yeah, you know what? That's an underdog story. Absolutely. Like he never saw. Rudy. So right. what can you but explain Ro to me? Yeah, it's Rocky. Okay, explain to people yeah. what what that Rocky three idea is. What was the Rocky three idea? He I'm was very, the I'm underdog, right? He got vague. he got his yeah. butt kicked. He got his butt kicked immediately, and then it was his comeback story, right? He was Rocky's always the underdog in every single movie, you know. So the first one it was going the distance with Apollo. The it was Clubber Lang. Is, it was Clubber Lang. Right. Rocky third III. one, yeah, yeah. Third one is Clubber Lang, uh, and then the fourth one is Ivan Drago. Third so one him, is third one is uh, I know we're going down a rocky rabbit hole. I haven't seen Rocky Thunder in Lips. years. 
Yeah. Thunderlips and Clubber Lang are yes. Rocky Three. Yes. Hogan. Is he alluding to Hogan? Am I nitpicking this too much? <laughs> Does he not want to do a pro a work match with Hogan? Is that what it is? Listen, man, I and then also on Dynamite, if you saw when they were doing that opening segment, they had blocked out CM Punk's face from the truck, the wrap, the vinyl right. wrap. They had put a bunch of stuff over it. Listen, you know, if I, I say this every time. If they could make this happen, if they could make this work in some capacity, everybody sits down and just gets over this ridiculous fight. This could be a humongous yeah. business opportunity for everybody that was involved in this, including Hangman and Moxley and, uh, you know, everybody else. Jericho, they, they yeah. this could turn into something humongous that would lead them into a one year or more of programs and opportunities to capture a captivating audience. I'm not saying that that's what I want. I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen. But in any business, uh, listen, I, I, my background is my background. I, I've explained it a thousand times. If I can make this work, oh, yeah, hell yeah, I'm going to try to make it work. You got Absolutely. the biggest story outside of, you know, there were three huge stories that year. Cody leaving, Vince's, mm -hmm. uh, Vince's uh, allegations, and him stepping down mm -hmm. from the company. And CM Punk, uh, CM Punk, uh, and the fight at 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 All Out, the scrum, yeah, the scrum. So there really, there really are not any bigger stories here. You're obviously not getting Cody back. Vince is obviously back in WWE, which you, that may work in your benefit in some capacity if you're AEW. However, this, you know, what you do with CM Punk, I, I don't know if he would go back to WWE. I, I don't know if that's a possibility. Likely not, but who knows. Where what is he gonna? He's gonna go to Japan. Maybe he could do that. There's nowhere else for him to go. He definitely has that pro wrestling itch back. You know, he didn't leave it on his own like terms. That. He left on a very, uh, very chaotic term. You know, when he left originally from WWE, he left on his own terms. He said, "Hell with this. I'm out of here." I don't think he would have posted something like this if he didn't have that itch, right? And also, the Rocky Three thing could be where Thunderlips throws Rocky into the crowd and starts doing like taunting. Maybe that's what Moxley wanted to you know, do. You know, you know, last time that's Moxley, like a very visually. Yeah. Last time CM Punk went into the crowd, guess what happened? He, he, he broke his foot or ankle, whatever it was. So maybe he didn't want to do Not, that. That's true. You know, but again, you know, like everything that's said and done, everybody has their different side to a story and everybody also has to remember this is pro wrestling. So at the end of the day, like you said, if, if money is to be made, this could be a they could print money with this, with the Moxley stuff, with the Buck stuff, with the Kenny stuff. You know? Absolutely. They have that in the chamber. And if they pull the trigger, this is how they start competing again. You know, CM yeah. Punk and Cody not being there. Honestly, I do think it kind of hurt them in a certain regard. Right. Absolutely. No, 100 percent of hurts them. Uh, you know, it hurt them with the PR aspect, the optics aspect with with an owner mm -hmm. a founder going. And it hurt them with their number one guy, their most drawable guy, leaving the company. 